Yesterday we talked about arithmetic sequences. And arithmetic sequences are when you um, add or subtract the same number to the previous term. So we had some of our problems in our assignment that was multiplying or dividing by a number. So that is what a geometric sequence is. Geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers where each term after the first is found by multiplying by some ratio. So with the arithmetic, we were adding and subtracting, but with geometric, we are multiplying by some ratio. The ratio could be 2, which is really 2 over 1, or it could be 1 third, or it could be 5. This ratio is called the common ratio. Which part? Right there, is that by or is it supposed to be? Right there, we put by of multiplying. Oh, yeah, probably so. Found by multiplying, yes. Good catch. Okay. So with the arithmetic, we had a common difference, but with geometric, we have a common ratio. So let's fill in on this formula. A n equals a one times r n minus one. What's a one? It's just our nth term. So that could be like A10. So 10 would be AN. We're looking for our 10th term, A10. What is A1? First term. So I feel like we need to do, we need to go ahead and write that down. Make another little box and put first term. This is our AN. Make another little box for first term right here. And then R is our common ratio. Just like D was our common difference, R is going to stand for our common ratio. So let's look at these terms. It says find the next three terms in the geometric sequence. So we have our first term is 648, and then it goes down to negative 216. So the way that we could find, well, I need to check if it's arithmetic first. So I would subtract and see, okay, does this subtract to get a that next number? Yeah. Well, it would be huge. It would be pretty big, right? Let's see, 648, negative 216, 72. If it was arithmetic, we would subtract this one from that one. 
negative 216 minus 648 be negative 864. So if we do negative 216 minus 864, if it was arithmetic, the next one would be negative 1080. And also look, see how this one's positive, this one's negative, this one's positive? That's also another clue that it could be a geometric. So to find our common ratio, to figure this out, what it goes by, it's going to be multiplied by something. You do your second term, A2 divided by A1, to find what that common ratio is. So in this case, go ahead and write this down. It'd be negative 216 divided by 648. Find out what that number is. And I want this to be a ratio, so I need to change this back to a fraction. How can I do that? No, math, frac, enter, enter. So that is negative one-third. So if that is our common ratio, then I can multiply 648 times negative one-third to get negative 216. And then I could keep on using that same ratio. So let's check and see if that works. So we do 648 times we need to put in that fraction negative one third and we get negative 216. So this is times negative one third. My pen does not work. So times negative one third. So then if it's the same ratio, I should be able to do negative 216 times negative one third. Negative 72. So to find the next, how many terms? Two terms on this one? Three terms. Then we would multiply 72 times negative one third. Negative 24. And you would keep on doing the same thing. To find those next numbers in the sequence. So negative 24 times negative one third. Be eight. And then we do eight times negative one third. So these are the next terms in the sequence. Okay, so something that you can uh, look at is if you multiply times negative one third, that's the same thing as just dividing by a negative three. If I would do 648 divided by negative three, you get negative two, 16. 72 divided by negative three, negative 24. Oh, I went to this one. Divide by negative three. Divide that by negative three. So anytime that you see that you can divide to get the next number, then that means it's a geometric sequence. It's getting smaller by a third. Okay, so we can write out here R equals negative one third.
Okay, let's do the next one. So that was one. This is two. 25, negative five, one, dot, dot, dot. So we need to find three more terms. So to go from 25 to negative 5, that'd be minus 30, right? But see how this one's plus, this one's negative, this one's plus? So it's going to follow the same pattern. This one's a positive number, this one's negative. This one's positive, this one's negative. This one's positive, this one's negative. So that's one of the clues that tells you it's a geometric sequence. So what do you think the pattern is? What is 25 being multiplied by or divided by to get negative 5? Negative, negative 5. Negative 0.2. Negative 0.2. So let's see. We're going to do A2 divided by A1. So it would be negative 5 divided by 25. Yeah, 0.2. Let's write it as a, well, I guess we could keep it like that, or we can do it as fraction math, frac. Negative one-fifth. So what that really means is I'm dividing by five each time to get to the next one. So this is R equals negative one-fifth. So we're going to use that to find the next three terms. So this is times negative one-fifth. So to get to this one should be times negative one-fifth. So we do negative five times negative one-fifth. It's one. So that works. Now we're going to multiply times. One times negative one fifth. Negative one fifth. And times negative one fifth again. So our previous times negative one fifth. One twenty fifth. And then the next one, I need to do negative one, or that was a positive one, 25th times negative one fifth, negative one, one twenty fifths. I guess I shouldn't have these over here. That's a little confusing, right? Okay, so if it's a fraction, if the ratio is a fraction, see how the numbers are going down? If the ratio is negative, the numbers are going opposite, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Negative 2, 10, negative 50. And this says write an equation for the nth term of the geometric sequence. So you got this down? You got the sequence written down? So we need to see what the ratio is. So we would do A2 divided by A1. 
What's A2? 10 divided by A1. Okay, what does that equal? 10 divided by negative 2? Negative 5. So it, the digits are increasing, but the signs are going positive, uh, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so it's times negative 5. Is 10 times negative 5 also? 10 times negative 5, does that equal negative 50? Yeah. Okay, so let's find the next term. Negative 50 times a negative 5. Mm-hmm. So it's 250 is the next term. Okay, so it doesn't ask us for the next term. It actually asks us for the formula. So let's write down what that formula is. A n equals a one times r raised to the n minus one. So in this sequence, what's A1? A1 is your first term. What's the first term? Oh, negative 2. And what's the R value? That's your common ratio. Negative 5. So we're going to plug this into the formula. So it's a n equals, and I'm going to keep them in parentheses, negative 2 for a 1 times r, negative 5, and then n minus 1. Keep everything in parentheses. That's the formula. We can't multiply these. But if we wanted to find, let's say, the sixth term, the way we would do that is just plug plug this in the calculator. Negative 2 times negative 5 raised to the 6 minus 1. And we would just put that in the calculator. Negative 2. Y'all put this in the calculator. Times negative 5. And then the little arrow up, carrot top, raised to the parentheses. What's 6 minus 1? What could I put in place of that? 5. Instead of putting 6 minus 1, I could just put 5. <clears throat> so to find the sixth term, it would be 625. I mean, 6,250. There we go. Okay, so we have this in here. Let's go ahead and type in our next three terms and then also the equation so that we can finish this slide. So this would be negative 24 comma 8 comma 8 oh, uh, negative 8 slash 3.
And then the next one, negative one fifth, comma, one twenty fifth, comma, negative one over one twenty five. Okay, so now we're going to write our formula that we found. So you're going to do A, and then do y'all remember how to do the subscript? What do we do? Control, comma for the subscript, and then control, comma to come out of it, equals negative two, negative five, and then we can get the exponents by doing control period. So negative two is your first term, negative five is your common ratio, n minus one is just part of the formula. Okay, everybody finish that? Okay, so let's go to types of sequences. Definition. How do we know if it's arithmetic? What's the, the key thing? What's happening between one number of the sequence to the next to the next? Let's look back over here. In an arithmetic sequence, each term is found by adding and subtracting the same number to the previous term. So arithmetic would be each term is found by adding or subtracting a common number to the previous just, huh? previous there we go each term is found by adding or subtracting a common number to the previous term so an example would be let's do uh, multiples of 5 5 10 15, 20, 25. Okay, geometric. How is geometric found? Yes. So each term is found by multiplying by a common ratio by the previous. term up here too. Each term is found by multiplying by a common ratio 
multiplying a common ratio by the previous term. There we go. Multiplying a common ratio by the previous term. So an example, let's say we start out with five, but we multiply by two each time. What would be the next term if I multiply by two? Dan, what would be the next one? 20, what would be the next one? And then, okay, dot, dot, dot. So it's growing, uh, or it's getting, uh, increasing faster is what it is. Okay, neither. How do we know if a sequence is neither? Do what? The sequence does not follow a pattern of add slash subtract or multiply slash divide by a common number. I'm going to give you a, an example. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. One, I mean, zero, one, one, two, three. And there's a few more, but let me zoom in so you can see a little better. Zero, one, one, two, three. For this sequence, to get from zero to one, you would add one, right? Okay, what about one? Zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. Two plus three is five. Five plus three, eight. Five plus eight is eight plus 13. 21, and so on. So this sequence, you're not adding by a common difference, you're adding the two previous terms. That's called the Fibonacci sequence. All right, last slide for today, 43. Arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Let's look at this first one. 8, 3, 13, 18, 23. What is it? Okay, why? Okay, so I'm going to put D equals 5, right? Common difference, D equals 5. Because you're adding by 5. We use the D for the common difference adding by 5. And the next one, one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Oh, okay, why? Because it's multiplying by, by what? Two. Two. So we're gonna put R equals two. Next one, 24, 12, 6, 3, 1.5, 0.75. Okay, why? Yeah. See how it's dividing? It's taking half of each one. 24, half of 24 is 12. Half of 12 is 6. Half of 6 is 3. So R equals 1 half, or you could say 0.5. Okay, let's look at the next one. 55, 51, 47, 43, 39, 
35. 55 to 51. Um, subtract. subtract 4. Does that follow the same pattern? 51 minus 4, 47. Huh? 47 minus 4 is 43. True? Yeah. 43 minus 4, 39. 39 minus 4 is 35. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? Arithmetic. And what is a... It would be a D because it's arithmetic. So what is the D equal? Right. Subtract four. Subtract four, so minus four. Okay, the next one. Two, five, ten, seventeen. Between five and ten, it's times two or plus five. Um, two to five is plus three, but the next one's not plus three, so it's not arithmetic, huh? Yeah, because if we divide, what you can do is you can divide your second one by your first one to see if there is a pattern. So you would do five divided by two. That's your A2 divided by A1. It's two and a half. And then see if that works for the other ones. Can I also do 10 divided by 5? That's exactly 2. So, yeah, it's neither. The next one. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. You would add 3. Add 5, so that's not arithmetic. If we divide these, 4 divided by 1 is 4. So it's not. So yeah, it's neither. So let's look at your assignment. We are only doing the sequence maze right now, and we'll uh, do the other side later. It says, solve each sequence beginning at the star and ending at the explosion. So put on here, start and end. Find the first find the common difference or common ratio and decide if the sequence is arithmetic or geometric. Write the common difference slash ratio in each box and color in the type of sequence it is. So let's look at the first one. Negative 16, negative 6, 4, 14. What is it? Adding 13. Plus 10. Okay, so does that work for each one? Yeah. So is that arithmetic or geometric? Okay, so I'm going to have you underline arithmetic and then draw an arrow. You are going to follow what it tells you, whether it's arithmetic or geometric. Draw an arrow, please. And we are also going to write, is this an R or a D? Is it a difference or a ratio? Difference. Different. So we'd write D equals 10. Let's go to the next one. 28, 26, 24, 22. So each time it's minus 2. So it's arithmetic. So underline arithmetic and draw an arrow. And is this an R or a D? So D equals negative 2. Okay, the next one. Okay, 162, 108, 72. If we subtract it, what would that be? Okay, so 
I would do 108 minus 162. So let's say minus 54. So let's see if the next one's like that too. 108 minus 54. It's 54, but it says it's supposed to be 72. So it's not arithmetic, so it could be geometric. To do geometric, you would do A2 divided by A3. So, uh, oh no, A2 divided by A1. What am I saying? I don't know. Sorry. So it'd be 108 divided by 162. Let's put that as a fraction, math, frat, two-thirds. So we need to see if that's the case on each one. So times two-thirds. So 108 times two-thirds. 72, that works. Let's do 72 times two-thirds. That should equal 48 if the, this is geometric. Yep. So is, do we write R or D? R, R equals two-thirds. And then it's geometric, so it goes this direction. Underline geometric, make that an arrow. All right, so you're on your own for the for the rest of it. I got you started.